Hi, I'm Miranda Kristovnikov and this is They Didn't Teach Me That. I've been contacted by a new teacher who's in desperate need of some advice on her big concern, marking. I've got her plea for help on this MP4 player and I'm going to play it to some experts, including one of the country's foremost art critics. Let's see if they can help. I'm on my way to meet my first expert, but in the meantime, take a look at the message I received. Hello, my name's Natalie Nicholson. I'm a modern foreign language teacher at Notre Dame High School in Norwich. I'm NQT plus one. I'm also on the Fast Track programme. And um, the problem that I'd like to have some help with, if I could, is uh, to all to do with marking. In the first instance, I'd love to know how I could reduce the amount of books I need to mark every week. At the moment, I'm taking back home, I'd say about 80 books to 100 every Friday evening. And I'd quite like to get rid of that because I'd like to spend more time with my family. Um, and the other thing is, when I'm marking these books, I'm aware of quite how dull my comments are. And it would be nice to know if there's a way I could feed back to the children something a little bit more exciting, something which will inspire them to do even better next time. So if anybody has any advice to give me or could give me some handy tips, that would be really appreciated. Thank you. So the two issues are how to mark more quickly and also more creatively. My first expert's had a fair share of books to mark in her time, so I'm hoping she'll start me off with some top tips. To start my quest, I've arranged to meet the author of The Ultimate Teacher's Handbook, Hazel Bennett. Well, Hazel, thanks very much for sparing the time to, uh, to spend with me. Now, we've got a teacher with a problem about marking an assessment. Her name's Natalie. If you just want to um, listen to what she's got to say, we'll start off with that. And it would be nice to know if there's a way I could feed back to the children something a little bit more exciting, something which will inspire them to do even better next time. So if anybody has any advice to give me or could give me some handy tips, that would be really appreciated. Thank you. Brilliant. So there you go. That was Natalie's plea for help. Now, have you got any tips for her about how to cut down the amount of time that marking actually takes her? Yes. Some things can be marked in class. For a few minutes at the end of a session, get the children to mark their own, call the answers out for things that are just right or wrong. And do you think it's acceptable for pupils to actually mark each other's work or even their own? Of course this is open to uh, abuse, but tell the children that you won't mind in the least if they've got everything wrong, but you'll be very annoyed if you catch them cheating. Also, when the children are working, walk around the class and pick their books up one at a time and mark the bit they've done. Now this is helpful to the child because you can point out to them the mistakes they're making and that helps them to put it right for the rest of the lesson so it's good for them. And how do you work out the best time of day to, to mark work? It's different for each individual person depending on your lifestyle. It's very important to mark at the most time economic period. Mm. Now, I have in the past, sitting on the bus, taken books out one at a time, marked them, and sitting on the tube is another good time, because that's dead time. And any more sort of general or practical tips? When you're marking, it's helpful to have lots of stickers, which stickers and stampers that say, excellent, well done, so she only has to stick them on or stamp them on. The kids love them, and they're time saving. And is it absolutely necessary for a teacher to mark everything? No. Uh, if there's only a few mistakes in each page, fine, mark them all. But if you have a page that's got lots and lots of mistakes, if you mark every single one, you're really going to discourage the child rather than encourage them. The best thing to do is pick on one issue and mark that. And at the end, put a pertinent comment with a target for them to improve for the next time. Fantastic, some really great tips on marking. Thanks very much, Hazel. You're welcome. Well, Hazel was full of good tips, don't you think? Using rubber stamps for marking, what a great idea. I wonder what Natalie would think of that one.
I've come here to the Tate Modern because the next person I want to talk to about marking and assessment is, oddly enough, an art critic and he should be waiting for me now. Hi, Adrian. Hi. I'm Miranda. Hi. Good to meet you. Hi. You too. The reason I wanted to chat to you is I've got um, a fast-track teacher called Natalie Nicholson who's having some problems keeping her assessments consistent. Now, as chief art critic of the Guardian newspaper, um, you've obviously assessed some great works of art, but you used to be a teacher, didn't you? Yeah, I have to say I was teaching art students, which is, is they're, they're slightly more willing than most, most uh, school <laughs> students. So if we're, if we're talking about um, assessing um, a piece of work, is it difficult to do that without destroying somebody's self-confidence if you're going to make neg negative comments about it? Generally speaking, I'm not trying to give these, you know, give award prizes and, and little punishments for good and bad. So it's not just a question of something being good or bad? That's the least of it. It's a matter of analysis and interpretation. It's really a case of you have to work at the... Some, you're, you're doing the work on someone else's work. You're working with it. And you've got to try and be a bit creative too. If you're only ever saying nice things, that ceases to have any real credence. And if you're only ever saying bad things and being the bad cop, then your negative criticism doesn't mean anything either. You know, it's about, you've got to be real and a bit balanced and to try and stay open-minded. But you can't just be nice. You've got to be encouraging and also try and push them beyond themselves. They might not even be doing something that looks very good, but they might be doing something that you can sense that little motor going around in their brain and you really want to find out what's both what's making it tick and what's winding it up and it's maybe your job to wind it up a little bit more so they go speeding off further and maybe pitch one against another and um, get a bit of um, ambition and, and jealousy running in there because that's, you know, we don't just work on our own, we work in relation to everybody else. Have you got any interesting anecdotes from artists that you might have irritated slightly with your comments? I've got lots of unrepeatable anecdotes and um, after I criticised her bed, Tracy Emin, this is when the bed was in the gallery by the way, Tracy <laughs> Emin did say, <laughs> did stop speaking to me for almost three years and then we kissed and made up. It's been great talking to you, Adrian. Some uh, interesting comments, if some slightly controversial, but uh, thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Well, Adrian certainly didn't let me down. Don't you just love art critics? Now, I've got to make a call to complete my mission for Natalie. I'm going to ring a guy called Phil Hyde, who's an AST with specialist experience in marking and assessment. So I'm just going to find a quiet place to pull over and make a call. Hi, Phil. It's Miranda from Teachers TV here. Hi there. Yeah, hello. Hi. Um, now, I want to pick your brains a little bit um, for our teacher, Natalie. She's finding that um, she's marking all evening and she doesn't f have the, the time to mark everything consistently all the time. Now, you must talk to lots of teachers in your work as an AST. Is this a common problem that you find? Indeed it is, uh, particularly for NQTs or people in their early years of teaching. Uh, there's so much that uh, people have to do uh, in terms of lesson preparation, which seems to take ages, um, doing work for initial teacher uh, trainers and uh, marking seems to go on on the back burner uh, but I don't think that teachers should mark absolutely everything. So it's not important to mark everything all of the time? No, Ofsted has said that uh, in fact we should be very careful about what we mark and uh, look very carefully they don't want us to be overburdened with our marking but that we should be uh, careful uh, about what we do and not uh, not overwork ourselves. So just in a nutshell, what are, the, what are your sort of top tips for Natalie? First of all, I think she needs to make sure that the students are aware of the criteria she's going to use when she marks a piece of work. Secondly, she needs to be consistent in her marking so that the students are aware of where they could make progress. Um, and she should, at the end of each particular piece of work perhaps, give them hints, perhaps in the, in the foreign language or in English, on how they might improve their piece of work. And what I think is very important for all students is that she should give a mark for effort. And not all students can attain at the highest level in terms of accuracy uh, and complexity in their language, but all, all students can make uh, a really good effort at their work. And it's a great motivator when they receive a high mark for effort. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Some very, very good advice there. Thanks, okay, Phil. Anytime. OK, Bye. thank you. Bye-bye. Well, Phil's advice complemented what Adrian and Hazel had to say, so it was really worth talking to him. And now it's time to feed back to Natalie. This is Natalie.
Lovely school and she should be waiting for me in her classroom. I've got all the interviews and information stored on this, so let's go and see what she thinks. While Natalie takes a look at that, let's just remind ourselves of what she's watching. Firstly, Hazel Bennett gave us the invaluable tip that Natalie might save ink and our make by using stickers to mark work. She said it was rarely necessary to mark everything and that dead time, like sitting on the bus, should be utilised to save your free time from being taken up with exercise books. Next, I met Adrian Searle, who suggested that marking is a creative endeavour, which can be used not just to grade, but to encourage and draw the best out of your pupils. And finally, Phil Hyde told me that Natalie should take care to be consistent to make sure the pupils know what the criteria for marking are and that it's a good idea to award effort marks. I think Natalie's just about finished. Let's see what she thought. So, what do you think of that? Some good points, bad points? Uh, very interesting, a real mixture and uh, lots of different things that I quite like to incorporate into what I'm doing already. Oh, is there any stuff in there that you thought, I'm definitely going to do that tomorrow? Um, I think the consistency is a really important point. I think that's very important. And it's, it, it is true, sometimes when you've got a stack of about 30 books, you kind of tail off towards the end. So the poor people who have got their books um, right at the end of the stack are probably being a bit hard done by. And what did you think of Hazel Bennett's advice? She said that I should try and mark on the bus, which is a bit difficult for me because I drive to work, so I'd probably be stopped if I did that. But um, she gave very good advice where, the, again, younger students are concerned. The stamps and the stickers, they do love that. And she also said something about them marking their own work, which is a very good piece of advice, and I definitely will use more of that. We went out on a limb a little bit by talking to the art critic, Adrian Sell, but was there any stuff that you thought that he said was quite useful in the classroom? Oh, absolutely. And it was interesting to know that he was a teacher, but of um, adult students, because I think his advice would be good for the sixth formers, for example. But where younger children are concerned, I think you have to be very careful about being overcritical and you have to encourage more than anything else. So it's all about telling them they've done a very good piece of work and they've made a huge effort, even though they've got it all wrong. And anything that you disagreed with? No, not that I disagreed with, but just that it's difficult to, you want to put all of those pieces of advice into practice and it's very difficult to find the time to do all of that well. So somehow I need to find a way of putting a little bit from each one into my practice. Great, well I'm really glad that was useful. Very good luck with everything. Thank you very good to much. Meet you. Thanks a lot. Hopefully Natalie's now better equipped to face those mountains of books. If you want to watch this programme on your own MP4 player, you'll be able to download it as a podcast at the end of the series from the Teachers TV website. But if you can't wait until then, don't forget you can now watch and download the programme via broadband. Next time I'll be sorting out the problems of another new teacher, but until then, goodbye.